You're flying. Well, this is in my Compact 23. Uh, this is where he got a through hole where he had attempted to put in a marine head and just couldn't get it worked out. So I'm going to try to uh, grind this up a bit and uh, where I can put a reinforcing patch over that and then put a backer block in it. And I'm going to put a transducer in there, a depth transducer. Uh, it's not the absolute perfect spot for it, but the hole's already there, so I'm going to just use it instead of uh, glassing it over and then drilling another hole, you know, just a little further, further forward. Um, and then this is where he had built up a pad for the head to, to sit on bolt on. I'm going to try to grind that up a little bit or at least smooth it up. So I'm going to make some noise and I'm going to make some dust. I'm going to try to collect as much of it as I can with the shop vac. Um, I, uh, I've got my shop vac in the boat, but then I've got an exhaust hose running from, from the exhaust side of the uh, shop vac out out beyond you know, outside of the boat. Um, but any excess dust that gets through, you know, blow outside of the boat. Uh, and also it'll just keep from stirring up dust in here with the, you know, with the exhaust uh, air coming out. So, and also the, it's, it'll be hot as well. So I'm trying to get some of that heat out of here. It's another 98 degree afternoon. I just turned my AC on in my shop just a few minutes ago, so it's still boiling hot in here. Um, I've got the uh, LED lights on in the cabin. Um, that's the only, only lights I've got on in here, and they did a pretty good job. I'm using epoxy resin and some 1708 glass and I'm going to just, just kind of freshen up this whole area here where he had done so much grinding and mess and then where I had to grind all that mess out and also to reinforce that uh, two inch hole where the transducers going to go a little bit in preparation for putting a backing, backing plate in it. Gonna pre wet the area. I sanded this whole area really good. I ground it down first of all get rid of the bulk of everything that was there and then uh, I uh, sanded it down with some um, 80 grit 80 grit um, sandpaper on a random orbit sander I took and just took a pencil and lightly traced out the area and then I, so I know where to pre-wet with the uh, resin and then I pre-wet pre the uh, the old um, fiberglass um, 
before I, and then I laid this in, in on top of that dry and then wetted it out real good. Right there, you can see the, the two inch hole right there. I'll uh, pre re drill that from the outside, you know, once everything's secure. Okay, so here's my backing plate that I'm going to use. It's a piece of uh, uh, 5 sixteenths thick, probably, fiberglass. Um, it's just a piece of heavy fiberglass. Uh, I'll cut that out. I'll put the uh, gel coat side up, facing the inside of the boat. That way I can get a good, good bond with the epoxy to here, to that down there, which is still tacky. I'll put uh, thickened, uh, thickened epoxy on the back of this and then just bed it right there. Okay, there it is put in place. Um, I got it, hopefully I got it centered good enough. I to put me some little marks on the uh, fiberglass before I squeezed it in to kind of get it halfway centered. Um, I use colloidal silica, epoxy mixed with colloidal silica, uh, and then just a touch of the uh, fairing compound in it. And again, it just seems to me to make it be a little bit more sticky where it stays where I put it and doesn't run out. And I've got a really good squeeze out all the way around. I, I bet, buttered it up really heavy um, to fill up any voids uh, in it. And um, got a good squeeze out. So I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. Okay. That's uh, neat enough for me. And tomorrow after that's cured, I'll drill drill my two inch hole again from the bottom side, from outside, through, and uh, clean it up again, wipe it down good again, and uh, and then uh, put in my transducer. And there you can see where I just took a just broke a stick and wedged it in place. So now I'll go inside and put the uh, washer nut on. And there it is on the inside. Made a little bit of a mess with the 5200. I always seem like I can't help but get it everywhere. But it's good. I just got it a little bit too far up the threads. Um, and then it kind of smeared everywhere. But, but it's all right. It's all bedded good. And uh, once it cures, I'll put the uh, transducer in. So I've got a drill um, limber hole or weep hole right down there. Okay, so I've got the uh, transducer in. Now I'm going to put the monel seizing wire on it to, just to make sure that it doesn't come undone. It has uh, convenient little uh, eyelet holes made into the retaining ring and also in the cap where you can wire them together. Well, this is what I've got on hand. Uh, this is new, uh, an I-50, I-60. Uh, this is uh, depth only. It's just a you know, depth with the depth alarm. Um, I've got that here. I always try to use what I've got on hand. And then I've got the transducer, an airborne transducer uh, to go with it. And of course, that's just your blanking, blanking plug for when you need to pull it out and replace it or whatever. You can put that one in there for blanking it off. And then there's my through hole. And then, then there's the the cable that plugs into it. It's the right kind of cable. Both of these are new, but I bought them I bought them second hand like I do most things. But they're you know, brand new in the box. So this boat has a forward looking sonar, a FLS bronze Echo Pilot, and it's on the little um, 
you know, the swivel uh, swing around to the cockpit. From what I understand, I need to I need to read the instructions again to make sure. But from what I understand, this uses a different frequency than the traditional transducer. So you can use them, you know, in the same boat side by side, so to speak, and they don't interfere with each other. 